When I was young, I was a, a sort of horror movie fan. I'm talking about like when I was eight or nine years old. They would show these like double bill movies. I, there would always be like a Hammer horror film and then straight after there would be some very old like black and white movie like a Boris Karloff film or something. I remember watching it and, and thinking, suddenly becoming aware of the frame. Aware that outside of that frame something was happening more things happening outside than there were inside the frame in order to make this thing inside the frame work. I don't know where I got this idea from, but it was just a sort of, it just occurred to me. And, and I remember thinking at that very moment, that's, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. There was like a, a lecture that strangely David Putnam was doing. I remember one thing he said was like, stick to what you feel instinctively is right. And I think that's good advice probably for every, anything, really. If you light a room, if you light a space, and you give it a feeling that when the actors walk into that space, they're like, oh my God, this is, it exists, you know? It doesn't exist as a series of shots or an abstract sequence, it exists as a space. It's, it's a playground for then the director and the actors to really exploit that space, you know, and give them the freedom. And that's something that then has expanded into all of the work that I've done since, really. Then in relation to the cameras, it was always like I would always bring the DIT onto set and say, come out of the tent, look at the space, this is, this is the look, you know? And then the cameras really, all they need to do is reflect that look. That's how you, well, that's how I work, at least now. When I first started using the Sony cameras was the F65 and X Machina and it was like it translated the space in a way that was pleasing to me and was true. And it also interestingly really informed the choice of glass that I was, you know, putting in front of the camera. Because the sensor was so sensitive, it, it would pick up the nuances in the glass without me having to then really go post heavy on it. The Venice 2 for me is just like, okay, yeah, it's a progression, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, and you need the sort of confidence to know when you're shooting something that you, you don't have to concern yourself with how the camera's going to behave. I think with that film, we were just gunning it every day and it was, and it, it helps me to know that I can just respond to something that I see uh, very quickly. And I want a tool that's going to enable me to do that. I can then take three candles and I can specifically position those three candles in a way which is, enables me to light a scene, right? So it's not I'm holding three candles, or someone's holding three candles so we can get an exposure. It's, it's beyond that. It's like now I can nuance that. Now I can gradate something, you know. In this case, I think we were just grab, literally grabbing some quick frames. Of the, it was like, okay, let's just quickly grab those, but let's kind of literally light with candles. But, bring that one closer, bring this slightly further away. But it all ha happened very quickly. It wasn't, you know, there was no like painstaking process. There are so many ways of making films and you can go anywhere with it. I think what's exciting now is, 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 is allow that technology to give you the space to have a clear vision about what you want to do. If that means it's your phone, or if it means it's a Venice 2. Any of those things can, can work for you, but don't worry about it if, you know, it, all it is is a tool. To give yourself a clear head and focus on the, on the goal, you know. <laughs>